Hey Red Geekers, Caitlin here. And for this week's episode, I want to talk about managing hypertension in the emergency department. Um, so the guidelines for hypertension have changed over the years, especially in the emergency department. And to manage hypertension acutely versus in a more long-term way is very different. Um, but first I want to talk about a few definitions of hypertensive urgency and hypertensive emergency. So the definition of hypertensive urgency is a blood pressure of systolic over 180 and or a diastolic over 120 with no signs of end organ damage. And I'll get to end organ damage in a second, but first I want to talk about these numbers first. So these numbers are just a guideline. Um, obviously, in patients that have had a normal blood pressure their entire life, and they have somehow a blood pressure 160 over 100, that is going to be an acute rise for them. And for whatever the reason, like a young person with uh, glomerulonephritis or a pregnant patient with eclampsia. So keep this in mind that you just need to compare these numbers to previous blood pressures. So when it comes to hypertensive emergency, this is when you have a systolic blood pressure greater than 180 and or a diastolic blood pressure greater than 120 with signs of end organ damage. So when it comes to end organ damage, this is damage caused by the high blood pressure that is within the patient's body. And the three most common organs affected are the head, the heart, and the kidneys. And if the head is affected, you might have signs of nausea and vomiting from the increased cranial pressure, um, vision disturbances, altered mental status, delirium, seizures. Uh, when it comes to the heart, you might have signs and symptoms of chest pain, shortness of breath, dizziness, nausea, vomiting. And you may have signs of elevated creatinine and or hematuria if you were to find any kidney damage. Um, but just make sure you are comparing this to the patient's baseline creatinine. Um, and then go from there. Now the new guidelines for hypertensive urgency, and that's with no signs of an organ damage, is to not treat in the emergency department. A lot of people will come into the emergency department with an acute rise in their already elevated hypertension. And that is because for whatever reason they're in the emergency department, either pain or they're sick, whatever the reason, um, their blood pressure is a little bit elevated and treating their blood pressure has been shown to have no benefit versus the risk associated. Um, but also just keep in mind of the clinical picture of the patient if they are about to be admitted, maybe get them back on their normal blood pressure medicine, especially if they've been in the emergency department for a long time with a workup. So just keep the clinical picture in mind. Now, when it comes to hypertensive emergency, um, the treatment will vary based on what type of emergency you may be dealing with. Overall, it is unwise to lower blood pressure too quickly as there are ischemic damages to the vascular beds that can occur after a habituated high blood pressure. So overall, you want to lower the blood pressure 10 to 20% in the first hour and then 5 to 15% in the next 23 hours. So that equates to lowering the blood pressure less than 180 over 120 in the first hour, and then less than 160 over 110 in the next 23 hours. Now there are two cases I can think of where you wouldn't exactly follow these guidelines. Um, and that is an ischemic stroke where you would want to uh, lower the blood pressure at a much slower rate, and in cases in aortic dissection where you would want to lower the blood pressure at a quicker pace. So in ischemic stroke, um, the elevated blood pressure is an autoregulation of the body to increase perfusion to the brain in the presence of a clot. There are two situations in which lowering blood pressure in an ischemic stroke is indicated, and that is when thrombolytic therapy is indicated and the patient's blood pressure is over 185 over 110 or when thrombolytic therapy is not indicated and their blood pressure is greater than 220 over 110. And um, obviously, like I said before, lowering the blood pressure at a slower rate in these individuals is better and it actually equates to being about 5% slower in these individuals. Now, when it comes to an aortic dissection, you wanna lower the blood pressure much more quickly um, to a systolic uh, around 100 to 120. Um, this decreases the shearing forces of the aorta and can stabilize the patient before they can go to um, vascular surgery and get what they really need for the definitive treatment.
Now what I want to talk about is um, what hypertensive agents you would use in specific hypertensive emergencies. Um, so when it comes to ischemic and hemorrhagic strokes, you want to use a beta blocker or a calcium channel blocker. Preferably if the patient is already on a beta blocker, use a beta blocker and uh, vice versa with the calcium channel blockers and IV is always recommended in emergencies. Um, and if the person is having a hypertensive emergency related to congestive heart failure and they may be having associated pulmonary edema, vasodilators are the best in this case, like nitroglycerin. Um, you don't want to use beta blockers or anything that will um, put strain on the heart and cause possibly more pulmonary edema. And if the patient is having acute coronary syndrome, like a heart attack, you're going to want to use nitroglycerin unless they are having an inferior MI or they have been on anything like a PDE5 inhibitor like Viagra. Um, you can also use beta blockers, which have been shown to increase um, or actually decrease mortality and increase prognosis in the long run. Um, so when it comes to renal patients in a renal hypertensive crisis, um, lowering the blood pressure in these cases is usually not indicated. Uh, there's only been one drug that has been shown to increase prognosis in the long run, and that is phenaldepan. Otherwise, these patients are usually getting dialysis when they are admitted. Um, when it comes to pregnant patients and when they are having a hypertensive emergency, uh, the go-to drugs are hydralazine, uh, methyl dopa, and I've actually seen labetal used, and those drugs are all good in the case of having a fetus inside you. So that covers everything I wanted to go over. I hope this helped in terms of how you manage hypertension in the emergency department, and that's it. So I'll see you next Wednesday, guys. Mm -hmm.